The Ontario School Board, through the help of the Liberal Party, has slowly been changing their curriculum to be more social justice. I recently talked to a concerned mother and her son who openly disagree with the social justice curriculum, particularly in the anti-white sediment and the interviews already on Rebel.media. The son goes to Mayfield Secondary School, that's a high school, one of the many schools infected by social justice ideology. Their story, as well as my interview, is already up on Rebel Media, so you'll be able to see it. So, in the meantime, afterwards, let me show you an assignment that was given to the son in his anthropology class. Within this assignment, there are 26 assertions made by the anti-racist feminist author Peggy McIntosh that supposedly prove that white privilege exists. She basically says, this is how it is for white people, that's not how it is for colored folk, therefore privilege, therefore racism. I'm going to read out to you some of my favorite assertions made on this list that's an assignment given to high school students. Remember, this is a homework assignment that's given to high school students about white privilege at Mayfield High School. They're already starting to teach children that they are either victims or oppressors. If you think that this homework assignment is bogus, and it shouldn't be taught within Ontario high schools, please click on the link below and sign our petition demanding that the principal of Mayfield Secondary School take down white privileged classes. Number one, I can, if I wish, arrange to be in the company of people of my race most of the time. Doesn't that entirely depend on where you live? I mean, if I'm living in Toronto, so an urban center, it wouldn't be difficult to find other colored folks just walking about. But if I'm living in Northern Ontario, cottage country, yeah, it'd be kind of hard to find another colored person. E either way, it's an individual's choice to live in whatever area they want to, an area with or without colored folk. In fact, you don't even have to be a minority within a country. You could always buy a plane ticket and leave the country and live elsewhere if you don't want to be a minority. Number seven, I can be sure that my children will be given curricular materials that testify to the existence of their race. I don't know what school you went to, but if colored people have impacted the country they're within, like colored people have impacted America, they're going to be talked about within the school curriculum. I mean, I was taught about Martin Luther King, Lonnie Johnson, George Washington Carver. Heck, I even watched Neil deGrasse Tyson on PBS programs at school. And in the future, kids will learn about Barack Obama and Jesse Jackson. Why? Well, they've impacted U.S. history. Thus, U.S. schools will probably put them in the curriculum, and they have put them in the curriculum already. Number 11. I can arrange to protect my children most of the time from people who might not like them. The police are here to protect everyone, especially Canadian police. Canadian police are not over militaristic, they don't target minorities. If you commit a crime, then yeah, they'll arrest you and yeah, they'll target you if you're a criminal, but if you don't commit a crime, they, they won't bother you, man. 16. I can remain oblivious to the languages and customs of persons of colors who constitute the world's majority without feeling, in my culture, any penalty for such oblivion. I'm pretty sure the people in India or Saudi Arabia know very little about Canadian and American cult culture other than what they see on TV and other than what they learn or what they choose to learn by themselves. So if they choose to learn English, then they're going to learn about other people's customs and languages. No one calls them racist or privileged just because they don't know a lot about other countries. Why is it considered racist or a privilege when white people don't know a lot about other countries? It's, that's normal. Most people are like that. Number 22, I can take a job with an affirmative action employer without having co-workers on the job suspect that I got it because of my race. Look, if I were to get hired by an affirmative action employer, I wouldn't be surprised that my co-workers who work with me would think that I got the job simply because of affirmative action. It's one of the sucky things about affirmative action. You can have a perfectly qualified person be placed under suspicion by his own coworkers just because he's a, he's a different race or just because he's a certain race. That's one of the reasons why we should get rid of affirmative action, but I guess Peggy McIntosh, the feminist who wrote this, would disagree with that. And finally, number 23, I can choose public accommodation without fearing that people of my race cannot get in or will be mistreated in the place I have chosen. Look. We don't live under segregation. In fact, it's against the law to deny someone a service here in Canada because of their race. And if you mistreat someone based on their race, it could be considered a hate crime. This, that's the world we live in. I mean, it's the world that people like you, Peggy McIntosh, and the feminists and leftists have created, and yet you still find room to complain about it. I mean, minorities have a very good in this country. Why do you have to always complain? So obviously, as you could see, this list, the homework assignment, teaching kids about white privilege isn't well thought out. 
It should not be taught in university, let alone grade school. But I mean, here it is. It, it is taught in the Ontario school curriculum. High school students are taught that white privilege exists and that pe white people have that privilege and colored people are victims. Well, as I've said before, I sat with the mother and son and I op who openly disagree with the school board curriculum and that interview is up on rebel.media. And again, if you think white privilege shouldn't be taught in schools, please click on the link below and sign the petition. By signing the petition, you are helping end the indoctrination within our schools. I'm Jay Faza from Rebel.me. If you enjoyed that video, please like, subscribe, Rebel.media, and please, if you don't like white privilege being taught within the Ontario schools, click on the link below and please sign our petition.